there are so many tutorials and materials out there on the internet sometimes it can be so overwhelming to learn what are the things that you need to learn so that you can be really good with react well today we are going to talk about the proper way to learn react <laughs> Hello nerdy friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vicky May and I am a full-time software engineer living in New York City. So in this channel, you are going to learn a lot of things about web development, learning how to code, and all things related to tech. As you might know that I am a full-time React developer myself, so these are probably the steps that I would recommend for anyone who just finished learning JavaScript and ready for the next step. So tip number one is actually learning consistently. So we all know that this industry is changing so fast and every day there's like a new framework coming out or a new technology coming out, especially for front-end developers and web developers. In order to keep yourself updated, you need to be constantly reading new updated documentations and follow through, you know, new updated articles about new technologies. Tip number two is the basic JavaScript knowledge. Now, in order to really grasp the whole concept about React, you actually need to be really good with JavaScript. And these are the following things that I think is extremely important in JavaScript for you to really grasp. Number one is variables. Variables are important because there are so many different ways to declare variables in JavaScript, such as const, vault, and let and know the differences between them. Number two is functions. Now, functions are very special in JavaScript, so I definitely want you to know that really well. Number three is data types that including objects and arrays and different data types in JavaScript. Number four is DOM manipulations. DOM stands for document object model. And I want you to really get used to manipulating the DOM on the web page and really understand how to use the dev tools to inspect things. Number five is asynchronous. And I want you to really understand what is asynchronous and how does asynchronous work? One of the best resources and places that I would usually go look up things is the MDN site, which stands for the Mozilla website. There are so many resources out there, not only limited to JavaScript, DOM manipulations, but also things including like HTML and basic CSS. I am going to link the site down in the description down below so you can definitely check that out. Tip number three is React related concepts that you must know. You probably already check out this React official documentation on how many different features that React has. And I am going to give you a walkthrough and a highlights of the most important concepts that you have to grasp. So you ready for this? So number one is components. As we all know, the major features in React is componentizing everything. So it's important to understand components in React and thinking of how to componentizing everything when you are building a application. Number two is routing and routings are important because we use it all the time. Number three is props. You need to understand what are props, how do you pass props down, and also how do you declare props in React. Number four is states, and it's really important to understand where do you declare states and really understand the idea of state management. Number five is inspecting developer tools. It's important to understand how to use the Chrome tools or the Firefox tool. Basically, like how do you inspect the web page and being able to really understand how to debug, how to, you know, set breakpoints and look into things within your developer tools. Number six is hooks. 
I remember when Hoax first came out, everybody was just mind blown on how cool Hoax is. Now it's important to understand Hoax, especially functions like use dates, use effects, use contacts in Hoax, and how do you use Hoax to fetch APIs is also really important. Number seven is Redux. Now I would say that using Redux for a small project it might be a little bit overkill. But I also think that it's important to understand Redux because a lot of companies are using Redux for state management. And I think that understanding Redux is only going to help you. So if you have the opportunity to learn about Redux, I would encourage to learn about that. Number eight is styling UIs. And the most popular styling UIs are probably like Bootstraps or Materialized UI or Tywin, those are very popular and I would say to just pick one and really you know, understand how to use styling components within React. When you are a React developer, you are basically using your own company's styling components. So um, understanding how to work with styling component is important as well. Number nine is testing and I cannot stress enough about understanding how to write unit tests and how to use testing libraries in React. And one of the popular ones that I would recommend is Jest. Number 10 is API consumptions. And I think that API consumptions are important because you gotta understand how to use APIs within React. It's very similar to um, using JavaScript, but it's a little bit different. And I found a really good article that explain and walk you through how you can use React hooks to call APIs and fetch APIs. So I am going to link that article down in the description down below and feel free to read that. And remember, you gotta learn how to read documentations. Tip number four is actually learning from practicing many React projects. I cannot stress enough about you know, how important it is to actually building projects while you're learning to code. And many projects are great because they're so easy to finish. It's really reinforcing the knowledge that you just learn either from tutorial or reading documentations. If you are enjoying this video, smash, smash that like button and share this video with someone who you would also think is helpful. All right, let's continue. So here are the three projects that I would recommend. Number one is the weather applications. And one of the key point about building a weather application is to teach you how to fetch APIs. And there are so many public weather APIs that you can look up for free. And it's a great idea to just help you to practice to fetch APIs. Number two is a good old to-do list. And you know how I feel about good old to-do lists. To-do lists are cool because it teaches you how to do all these CRUD actions in React. So what is CRUD? CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. And in the to-do app particularly, it teaches you how to pass props and other things that are also important in React and help you to get really familiar with that. Number three is e-commerce and this teaches you to fetch APIs and also use stores such as Redux. And one thing that I would say that it's helpful when you're building an e-commerce site is to consider using commerce.js and I'm going to link this product down in the description down below. Instead of building your own backend also for the sake of practicing, you can just simply use commerce.js instead. It's really good for the purpose of practicing in a project. Number five is getting the real world experience. And this sounds just daunting. And I know that a lot of times you feel frustrated when you get rejected, especially when you don't have the work experience for it. And recruiters are looking for, you know, developers with at least one year's of work experience that could be rough to get the real world experience. Don't be afraid of applying for jobs and don't let the job descriptions intimidate you. Sometimes, or maybe a lot of times that job descriptions 
are just like their wish list. Like they wish to find someone like that. It's not their must list. Just keep applying so you can get the interview opportunities from companies. Tip number six is how to build projects in React. How do I go about, you know, really complex projects or even just the projects that are in my head? How do I go about it as a developer? Always break down into small components or think about componentizing everything in your application. So let's think about an example. Let's think about how we would create our own Facebook right or meta and what are the main mvp features that you wanted to have on your facebook maybe the first thing i wanted to have is being able to view the posts and the second thing that i wanted to do is being able to create posts knowing that info already the first thing is create a component that fetches from the API to display the data that you get from the database. The second thing that you need is to create a component, probably an input field where the user will be able to enter whatever they wanted to enter. And when they click on post or submit button, that submit button will send the data from the user to send it to the backend or the API to update that information. That sounds way more simpler than thinking, oh, I am just going to build a huge Facebook application or I'm just going to clone, you know, the next Twitter or whatever. So I am not done with you yet. I am going to give you some homework. I want you to really think about an Airbnb homepage. And what I want you to do is break down that homepage into components and comment down below and i would love to see how you guys would think about componentizing Airbnb and how you would architect this when you're looking into a web application or a web page and also if you're thinking about project ideas to fill on your resume i've got a video for that too make sure to check that out and if you're currently learning to code best of luck you can do this and adios